Welcome back. As we were talking about, President Trump's senior policy advisor, Stephen Miller, has reportedly played a big role in the shaping of this administration's immigration policy. In a new interview with the New York Times, Miller had this to say, quote, no nation can have the policy that whole classes of people are immune from immigration law or enforcement. It was a simple decision by the administration to have a zero tolerance policy for illegal entry, period. The message is that no one is exempt from immigration law. You may recall that Miller has at times made Made controversial claims about the sweeping reach and depth of the president's executive powers. Here he is back in February of 2017 talking about the president's travel ban. The end result of this, though, is that our opponents, the media, and the whole world will soon see as we begin to take further actions that the powers of the president to protect our country are very substantial and will not be questioned. So Eli Stokels, uh, he pretty much made the point you were making earlier uh, in that Times interview. He said this was our this was our idea, this was our decision. We're gonna knock it, we're gonna have a zero tolerance policy. At what point does this become though? And you know, I want to be careful in kind of how how we talk about this because we're talking about real people who are having a really very difficult and terrible time. But clearly, this administration has found political advantage in taking on these emotional issues, pushing these buttons. Is there a point at which, though, this becomes a political crisis for the White House, something that they need to turn back? I don't know if it will impact support for the president, but going into the midterms, I have talked with Republican consultants in the last few days as this has gotten more and more attention, and they're concerned about this. They're concerned about what this does in terms of galvanizing voters in these swing congressional districts, suburban women who don't like these images on TV. Um, and I think that, you know, it's a long time. The election's still a long ways away from now, and it seems crass to talk about this in terms of the politics and the impact on the election. Uh, but I do think that you're starting to see members of Congress say, we don't like this policy. There are not a lot of people who are defending this policy. There are some people in the administration who have gone on record or on background and said, look, this is a deterrent. We're doing this mm -hmm. at the same time that the president, Kelly and Conway and others are trying to sort of walk away from it and put this on the Democrats. But I think muddling it makes it less clear. If the White House is successful at muddling who's actually responsible, and if people out there say, I don't care who's responsible, I just want members of Congress somebody to fix it, then both sides may uh, be blamed for this ultimately. It's yeah. hard to say clearly what will happen. Guys, Cecil, you were uh, making the point uh, as we were kind of coming into this that a lot of these suburban house districts, the, the competitive districts, are in places where this story might really resonate. I think so. I mean, look, there are mothers and fathers all across the country watching these images. And I think, you know, the only muddling that's happening on the part of the White House is muddling MS-13 and these gangs with what is really happening, which is we have asylum seekers who are the victims of violence, who are the victims of gangs in their country, who are coming to our border. They are seeking asylum and they are being turned away. They're not being allowed to enter into the country to go through the normal channels the way that the administration says they are. They are being forced to go to other border crossings and then they're being arrested and separating from their kids. And in many cases, they're being immediately deported. But their children are still housed in these 10 cities. I mean, there's multiple uh, documentations of the kids being not only separated, but being kept while the parents return. And I just don't believe that Americans are going to look at these images and say, gosh, the administration is making the right decision. That the policy is, in fact, the right thing to do for the protection of our country, to abuse and to hold hostage and to cause permanent damage to seven and eight year old kids. Mm. A couple weeks ago, Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon tried to gain access to Casa Padre, the converted Walmart now holding nearly 1,500 migrant children who have been separated from their parents at the border. This week, we learned that nearly 2,000 children have been separated from their parents at the border in just the last six weeks. That is thanks to this zero-tolerance policy implemented by the Trump administration. Now, Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon is back in Brownsville at these border detention centers, along with his colleague, Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen, and they join me now. Uh, gentlemen, it's uh, nice to see both of you. This is a different uh, locale than, than the one in which we are normally uh, talking to each other in the halls uh, of the Congress, but I'd like to hear uh, from both of you uh, what you saw today, whether you were able to get access or any additional information. Uh, one question that my colleague Jacob Soboroff has raised in his reporting is that, uh, you know, one of the centers he saw there were young boys, but it's not clear where young girls or some of the toddlers that we've seen photos of uh, are being kept. So I'm interested to know what you know uh, that's new, Senator Merkley, and, and then if you if you will, Chris Van Hollen as well. 
You bet. Uh, thanks so much for paying attention to this, because this is really an American tragedy that's unfolding, this new policy of ripping children away from their, their parents as the families seek asylum. The facility behind us, we did gain admission to it. This is Casa Padre, uh, somewhat uh, ironically named, given that uh, House of the Father, and here we are on Father's Day, and yet there are no fathers inside. Now, in April, they had some 500 kids here. Now they have almost 1,500. This huge surge in kids is a large part Part, uh, the result of this policy of separating children from their families seeking asylum. The uh, American Academy of Pediatrics said that this does irreparable harm to children, and so it, it has to end. Uh, Casey, um, this is a deliberate policy of separating uh, parents from their kids. Um, we were just inside this uh, children's facility uh, where there are many kids who've been separated from their parents. The kids here are 10 years and older. Uh, we were told that a lot of the kids who've been separated from their parents are under 10 years old, and they're at other facilities, mostly in this area, in fact, some run by uh, this organization. I should stress that the people who are working here are doing the best to care for these kids under very difficult circumstances, circumstances handed to them because of this deliberate policy of separating uh, kids from their parents. But at other facilities, uh, there are the girls who are under 10, the boys who are under 10, and I do think we all need to make sure that we're finding those facilities and taking a look there as well. Uh, HHS, the government, uh, refused to allow any of the kids here to talk to us. Um, obviously, um, they're not interested in a lot of transparency. I want to ask you also uh, on the legislative front. In the House, there is a compromise uh, bill on immigration would deal with uh, dreamers and, uh, and a series of other issues. But they also are talking about ending uh, this separation, prohibiting the separation of children from their parents as part of that uh, legislation. Nancy Pelosi, the leader of the House Democrats, essentially came out and said she needed to see the details, but it's unlikely she could support a bigger package simply for this one provision. Do you think that? The there's a world in which uh, either of you, and, and again, just for the, the simplicity, I know you guys are having some uh, technical difficulties. We'll start with Senator Merkley and then uh, to Van Hollen as well. Uh, could you support a package uh, of reforms that included ending this policy? Well, certainly it all depends upon the details, Casey. But here's what really bothers me. The president came out a couple days ago and said that part of the value of his policy of separating kids from the parents is it gives him legislative leverage. It is unacceptable in my mind, I think in the minds and hearts of any American, that someone can justify a policy of deliberate harm to children as a way to gain legislative leverage. We need to do right for these kids, regardless of any other pieces of the immigration puzzle. And, and Casey, uh, I, I think it's been well established that there's no law currently that requires President Trump to do this. I mean, that has been shown to be patently false. I mean, that is a lie. This is a deliberate policy change, which is why you see a sudden spike over the last six weeks in the number of kids who are separated from their parents. Uh, President Trump could right now, on Father's Day, do the right thing and end the policy and reduce the number of kids. In fact, eliminate the number of kids being torn away from their parents. He could do it today. Speaking of the bill. And wouldn't that be an absolutely great thing to do on Father's Day? Speaking that would be President. the right thing to do on Father's Day, be the right thing to do any time. And, you know, he should do the right thing by the American people. I think you're finding people across the country, regardless of party, saying this is not who we are, this is not American, this is inhumane. To underscore, too, Senator Lindsey Graham actually said on Friday he could end this with a simple phone call. But I, I do want to play for you how President Trump uh, is framing this, what he is saying about it. Take a look. We'll talk about it. Can you, you agree with uh, children being taken away from No, I hate it. I hate the children being taken away. The Democrats have to change their law. That's their law. That's your own law. That's the Democrats' law. I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to that in real time. He says that's the Democrats' law. 
You know, other presidents, when they make decisions, they say the buck stops here. They face the public. They say, this was my decision. This is why I did it. I'm taking responsibility, and I'm going to explain it. Not with President Trump. President Trump made this decision with his advisors, planned it over a series of months, implemented it in April, announced it May 7th through his attorney general, and then he says it's the result of some law that was passed by Democrats. Well, here's no, a news flash. <laughs> Not true. And I've noticed that so many articles now, when they recite this claim, they just say in the next paragraph, of course that's not true. I mean, this president now has no credibility on any issue, uh, but the fact that we can just routinely say it's not true says, says how far we've, we've come in the legitimacy of the argument. But no there's, no, there's no law that forces this to happen. It was an administrative decision. Uh, it is a terrible, terrible decision. Yeah, look, the, the president knows it's unpopular, uh, and he just wants to put it on somebody else, even though this was a deliberate decision that they made. I mean, for goodness sakes, we've all read the memo from his own Justice Department that lays out this new policy that results in separating uh, kids from their parents. It's, it's right there in black and uh, white. What President Trump is trying to do is use something that he could take care of himself right now to try to get other changes in immigration law as part of uh, the process in Congress. But that has nothing to do with his ability to change this right now. And so it really is not just cynical, it is downright cruel and inhumane to literally hold children hostage as part of a larger, broader negotiation on immigration reform when he could prevent the separation of kids from their parents today. Senators Chris Van Hollen, Jeff Merkley, thank you both so much for your time tonight. Really appreciate it. Travel safe back home. Casey, Franco, I thank you. Thank you. Franco, I want to give you, give you the last word uh, here, just to respond to kind of what the senators were laying out there. And I mean, try to walk us through how this ends. I mean, I think it's we shall see. I mean, I agree completely with Eli that this could be the moment that kind of breaks the camel's back, that this could be the thing where people uh, step up and uh, force a change of the Trump administration. But as we've seen in the past, they have not done that. Uh, when he talked about the Mexico, uh, when he ran, started running for president, uh, he talked about Mexicans bringing, back, bringing their racists and their worst here. He continues to read that snake poem uh, that just talks about immigrants coming act equating uh, immigrants to snakes possibly biting people who are right. uh, sympathetic to them so this is an issue that is obviously not going to go away but it's certainly not going to be finished in the next week when they start doing votes Frank Ordonez thank you so much for your time tonight really appreciate it hey there I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube if you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos